Hello, everyone. So in this part of the lecture, we are going to now cover, continue with the specialty package incorporation forecasting problem, where we, are, we were looking at the black plastic forecasting here. You can read about the case if you're not familiar with the case. So here, our main goal is to find out which forecasting method should be used for the given data here for these two, two, two different types of plastic demand. So we were looking into the black plastic and then we can follow the same approach to do the forecasting for clear plastic. And here looking into the data, we can already see that for black plastic, we have a seasonal peak in the quarter four. And for clear, we have a, a clear plastic, we have a seasonal impact or a peak on quarter two. So it's a clear, it's clear that there is seasonal effect and we should use a model that can account for seasonal effects, okay? So now what we are going to do is we are going to solve this forecasting problem using Holt Winters model. In the, another part of the lecture, we have covered how to do the forecasting using univariate regression. If you haven't watched that, please uh, have a look there. But now let's come here on Holt Winters model. From the data pattern, normally uh, we knew that uh, let's say if we try to plot it here again, we could see it there, but let's say we try to plot it again here. I just selected this cell and then I'm going to say, we want some line graph, okay? And here, maybe we can pick, yeah, the black one looks cool. Black one actually looks cool. I think I, I will go with this one for now, okay? And we can remove this for now. It looks nice. We, yeah, it looks nice actually. So it, it's okay. We can move it in this corner and make it small for now. Maybe later we will try to make it big. Uh, but for now we just make it small and keep it here in this corner. Okay, so that we can see it here. So we could see the seasonal effects. Uh, and then we have to consider models that has that can account for seasonal effects. So Holt Winter is one of the models. Here I copied the equation for Holt Winter's model. So Holt Winter's models are also known as the exponential triple exponential smoothing models, because here we have three exponential smoothing three smoothing components alpha, beta, and gamma. So I have created these cells here to put the values of alpha, beta, and gamma. For a, for a start, we can put the values of 0.1 for alpha, 0.2 for beta, and 0.3 for gamma. Usually after running the model, we optimize this alpha, beta, gamma values using a simple optimization. But for, to start off, we can start with 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3, okay? And hull windows model, it can be multiplicative and it can be additive model. So here you see these equations, the form of equations here, it's a multiplicative equation, multiplication format. So here the first line yt plus one, so that's the forecast of tomorrow, that will be equal to the level value of today plus multiplied with h is the horizon, okay? Multiplied with the trend value of today. And this whole thing multiplied with the seasonal factor of corresponding previous period. So for example, if I'm in January in 2022, I should take the seasonal value of January 2021 and multiply it here, okay? So that's the idea here. The age value, the horizon, that we normally don't use it when we do training sample forecast, but we use that when we are forecasting unknown future, okay? So that's when the out sample forecast, that's when we use that age uh, values, okay? And here then this L comes from these equations, okay? This kind of formations are also known as a state space model where one is connected, one, 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 one state is connected with another state and then another state is connected with another state. So these models are also known as state space models. And here you see that we, for, for, for level, we are just going to follow this equation and trend we are just going to follow this equation and the same for seasonal component. Okay, I'm going to show you the implementation of equations, of course, in this Excel file. But the main difference between the additive and uh, multiplicative model in the Hall Winters is that here in the additive model, instead of this divide with the seasonal value, we will have a minus. Okay, and also here, instead of this divide here, 
yt divided by lt here we will have a minus okay and then here when we are multiplying with the seasonal component on, on the first equation here so there it will be plus so lt plus tt plus s t minus m minus h so we will we will replace the seasonal uh, we will replace some of the multiplications with plus and some of the divides with minus so that's the only difference and interestingly, the equation for trend remains the same in both cases. Okay. In Haldwinders, as you can see, here we kept this cell as a starting point. Sometimes we will need some starting values to start because if I want to start the level level equation here, I need a level value from the previous period. So there are many different ways of really coming to this level period in different ways, but I figured out that using the regression approach, univariate regression approach actually is one of the best. It gives one of the best forecast results. So I normally recommend this. So the regression part we did here where we did this deseasonalization uh, by dividing the demand values with the seasonal index and then running a univariate regression to get these coefficients here for intercept and the X variable coefficient these two values we can actually use as our starting values in our hall to windows model so if you haven't watched the regression part univariate regression part i highly recommend that you have a look there so here what we are going to do is in the level we are going to use the intercept value from here okay starting level value and in the starting trend value we are going to use this x variable here Okay, so these two are taken from the estimation of the univariate regression. Now, in the level, we are going to simply implement this equation here, the level one. So we start here with LT equals to alpha, which is here. And we should actually fix it with a four in Windows computer or just put the dollar symbol or you can use the control command, uh, uh, command F4 in Mac, right? So alpha should be multiplied with yt. yt is the demand value of this period, yt, divided by the seasonal uh, index value of the last quarter. So now the thing is, we don't have the value of the last quarter, right? So what we can do is we can use simply this seasonal index that we have calculated, okay? So again, to see how we calculated this, you, I recommend that you look into the univariate regression uh, example, okay? So we are going to use that seasonal index value uh, as a starting uh, seasonal index value, co considering that it is the one from the past period. So that's kind of an assumption here, okay? Then plus, we are going to say one minus alpha, just following the equation, nothing else, one minus alpha. We are going to multiply this with L T minus one and plus T, plus T minus one. So L T minus one is the level value of the past period plus the trend value of past period. That's it. Okay, and we are done with our equation here. Similarly, now let's try to put in the equation for trend. So we start here with our equation. We have to select beta and we fix beta multiplied with we start a bracket here lt minus lt minus one so lt would be now this one the level value of this period minus lt minus one would be the level value of previous period this one okay plus one minus then we take the beta value again and fix it with f4 in windows computer or you can put the dollar symbol manually and this one minus beta is going to be multiplied by t t minus one so that's the trend value of the previous term so that's this one okay and then we can put enter so we have already successfully implemented these two equations now we are also going to try to implement the seasonal equation here so we start with equal to we see that we start with gamma so we take the gamma value and fix it multiply this with we see yt divided by lt. So yt would be the demand value of this period, which should be divided by the level value of this period. Okay. Bracket close plus start another bracket, one minus, again, we pick gamma 
And when we pick alpha, beta, gamma, we have to fix them because when we are going to drag, they should not change. And then it should be multiplied with S T minus one, T minus M. So M, 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 T is the period now, and then M is the number of seasonal periods. So here M would be number of quarters, so four quarters. So we should multiply with, with the quarter one of the previous year, but we don't have that value. So we are just simply going to use the one that we have estimated before doing the, when, when doing the univariate regression, okay? Regardless of doing the univariate regression, we can just calculate the seasonal index anyway, okay? So we are just going to use this one for now, great. Now, we are going to drag these three equations only up to the period of four quarters. So I'm going to drag it up to this point. I'm going to drag this one up to this point. And I'm also going to drag it up to this point, four quarters. Everything looks great. But for the fifth quarter, some things are going to change. So that's something you have to remember, okay? If you are doing with monthly level, then after dragging it up to 12 month, on the 13th month, something is going to change. So we are dragging it one period more, but now the thing is, now we don't need to use this seasonal value anymore because we already have now new estimation of four previous seasonal values, seasonal index values. So now we are going for a dynamic approach with the seasonal values, which will be updated for every year. If we look into the equation of L2, we are using the seasonal value here after here, like uh, alpha multiply, multiplied with the demand value minus the seasonal value of the previous year. So here, this is the E10, that's it. And we are going to replace this E10 by this allow, okay, N6. So we are taking the seasonal value from the previous year, enter, okay. Now we can drag it up at this point. Don't worry about these errors, okay? Because we are getting some errors because our uh, these values are also related with the previous values of trend and season, so which are not yet estimated here. So that's why we are getting these errors. Don't worry about that. Now let's look into the trend uh, equation here. Here, if you look into the trend equation, we don't have any seasonal component. So we don't really have to update anything. Okay, so we can actually just drag it up to this point. But then here, when we look into the seasonal equation here, you see the last part of the equation is multiplied with the seasonal index of the previous part. Okay, this E9, E9 comes from here, right? But then when we drag it to the next period, we don't want it again to be multiplied with E10 because now we have real seasonal value estimated of the previous four terms. So we can actually use those. So again, we are going to select now this one, N6 instead of E10, press enter. Now we can drag it up to this period. So now you see we have all the estimation of this level, trend, and season. Now using them, we can simply calculate the forecast. So to calculate the forecast, what we simply have to do is that we just take the summation. We, we, we just take the summation of L plus T, multiply this with the seasonal value, right? So now here, let's try to implement this equation for YT plus one, okay? So here for yt plus one, we should start with a bracket. Then we are going to take the level value, okay, of the previous term plus the trend value of the previous term. We do this, right? The h1, the horizon that we don't use here. We use it when we will be forecasting these out sample periods. That's when we are going to use the h. So here we simply take the L plus T, and then we are going to multiply it with the seasonal index of the previous first quarter, which we don't have when we are starting here, right? So then we can simply take the quarter of this one, okay? Enter. 
And then we are going to drag it up to four periods. That looks reasonable. We are always taking the level and trend values of the previous terms and multiplying it with the seasonal index of the previous term, which we don't have for the first year. So that's why we use the ones that we estimated here for the overall data, okay? But then when we drag it here on the fifth term, we are now going to update this seasonal index value to this one. Now we are starting to implement this perfectly, okay? The equations. So now we are using always the previous data, the level value, then the trend value, then the previous seasonal index. Enter, and then we are going to drag it up to this point. So here we already have the forecasts. So now we are going to calculate the MAP, the errors the same way that we have done before. So we are just trying to following this equation kind of. So we start with the ABS, the absolute value of the demand minus the forecasted value, okay? And then we divide it by the actual demand value again. So then we get the percentage error and then we can drag it. And then here we are going to take the average. We are going to take the average of all the forecast errors. And here we see it's about 11.61%. So it's slightly higher than the regression approach, okay? But we haven't done any optimization of these parameters. So to do that, we can now go to the data and then we can go to solver. If you do not have solver, you simply go to file and then you go to options. Then here you go to add-ins and here you go and select the solver add-in and click okay, then you will see it popping up here. So normally this analysis tool pack and the solver, these two are widely used, okay? So if you go to solver, I'm going to reset my solver, okay? So here, what we are going to do is we are simply going to minimize the MAPE, okay? We are going to minimize it by changing values. We can change only these three cells while minimizing the MAPE, okay? And what is going to be our constraint? So we are mainly going to have two constraints. So that is that these three cells, they has to be less than or equal to one. Uh, these three cells, they has to be also greater than or equal to zero. So it has to be between zero and one, both of their values. Okay. So these are mainly these two things that we are going to add. Here we have these three, three options, simplex, linear, and evolutionary. Normally I recommend, try, I recommend trying with the nonlinear one here. So go to solve. The thing is we could get only as best at, as the regression here by using these parameter values here. So if I try to, yeah, it recommends us to use uh, zero, zero and yeah. So from here, what we see is that actually the best would be this 10.19%. Uh, but now what we can do, we can use these models to forecast the previous period. So first, if we drag this forecast, uh, we can use this uh, model to forecast the future periods, okay? So if I just drag this to one period more, we already have the forecast for the year six, quarter one, because here we are simply following uh, the equation properly, okay? But now one of the problem is going to be that if I drag it more, I don't have the values of my level and trend to use anymore. So how are we going to do it? So this is where we use the age component here, the horizon component, okay? So now what we are going to do is we are going to create this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. This 12 horizons, okay? I usually prefer to color them in a way that they are not very much visible, but to some extent visible, okay? So now from this cell here, we are going to now implement the H component. And here we are going to use the previous term, this one, 25, okay? And here also 25. But then we are going to multiply this T component with the horizon, H. 
Okay. So we are going to multiply H multiplied with the trend component. As you can see in the equation here, H is multiplied with the trend component. And the whole thing is then multiplied with the season index of the previous term. Okay. And then we are going to fix this F4, and we are also going to fix this one with F4. Okay, and then we are going to press enter. And then we can do it up to three and four, and it looks okay. But now what happens is that if I drag it one more, then we don't have seasonal component anymore. So then we again remove this, the seasonal component, and we select the one from here press enter, we drag it for four periods, works fine. Then we drag it one more and then again, update the seasonal component with what we had the last time. And then we are going to drag it for four more periods. Okay. So normally this is how we can also forecast the out sample periods. Okay.